Yeah, I mean, first of all, I'm excited to see everybody. This has is, is been some unconventional times, but um, with some good Wi-Fi, we can accomplish anything. Um, obviously, I have been very, well, I've been saddened by the news about David Johnson and then and felt encouraged after getting the play-by-play as he he comes back because I know he would be all over that recruit we just signed and uh <laughs> and he would be texting me like I need to get the first dibs on it you know uh I can't wait to talk to him about it uh when he pulls through and um you know like we just finished up our class I'm excited been trying to get stuff done here and and doing the best that we uh, we can with what we have a uh, question from Parrish. All right. Hey, tell us, you left me, your roster stands to look so different next year, so many new pieces and yeah. everything. How does that change what uh, – well, well, let me rephrase that. How difficult has this time away been for you? What have you not been able to do? How has that slowed you down considering mm -hmm. all the change that you stand to have with your roster? Uh, well, you know, uh, it hasn't slowed us down any, obviously. We just got a pro <laughs> that we signed. So if anything, it may have helped us out. Um, uh, but, but it has been different. I mean, those kids still would have been in school, so where they were. So usually at Ole Miss, they don't come until May 26. So it's not like they would have been here anyway. As far as with our, our returners, you know, the situation is probably good for all of us. I know it's been great for me. This has just been a grueling season, and it was very tough. And so this time has just given me an opportunity to, to press the reset button. And uh, right before COVID-19, like, I was getting ready to really ramp it up and go and recruit and be out. And so just having an opportunity to pause and reflect and, you know, uh, do stuff with the girls virtually and just this time just to get, I mean, you know, when you're a head coach and you're going through a, a rebuild and it's a tough rebuild, you don't necessarily have time to have any emotions. Everyone else around you has emotions, but you don't have time to have it because you have to be the strong one. And so this time has allowed me to have those, those emotions from the season and really just, come back and feel refreshed and, and, you know, I'm just excited to get them back on the floor whenever that is. What would it mean to your, uh, your roster if, uh, and her name escapes me right now, I read it, your Maryland transfer, what's her name? Katira? Katira? Yeah. Okay. What if uh, the legislation passes and she is eligible next year? What would that mean for you? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> When obviously I was a, I, I was totally against the whole one-time transfer deal, but now that we have her, I'm all for it. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, selfishly, uh, but you know that's just me being in the moment. Boy, if they pass that and she's able to play, I mean this kid. I don't know that the SEC has seen a player like her since Candace Parker. You know she's 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 really really good. Um, for example, I had three WNBA coaches text me yesterday um, with the saying, I guess I'll be coming to Oxford. <laughs> so um, she's an impact player. Um, she's, a, she's a quality person, high character, um, just extremely skilled. There's stuff that she hadn't even really done yet. Um, and, and we are lucky to have her. We're excited about that. I just think I think in, in, in the SEC, Power 5, you, you got to have pros, you know? And you had low major, you got to have mid majors. When you had mid majors, you got to have high majors. When you, gotta ha when you had high majors, you got to have a couple pros. And I, and I thought we had a potential pro with Madison Scott, our freshman coming in. Uh, I think Donetta Johnson has a chance to be a pro. When I say pro, I'm talking about WNBA. And then, of, of course, Shakira is definitely – a WNBA prospect, and if she does well enough, I could see her going early in the first round, if not number one. Why were you initially opposed to the uh, one-time transfer? Uh, I guess 
Uh, I, I, really, I was just kidding. Uh, I, I, I don't know that it matters what we think as coaches because I think it's inevitable. I think it's going to happen. Um, I, just, I just know that right now we have in women's basketball in Division I, 500 kids in the portal. Um, and I just think the 1% of the rich will really benefit from it. I just don't see how everyone else will benefit from it. And, and I hear all the time, oh, coaches can leave, so why can't, you know, players leave? Well, you know what? Jacksonville got six-figure richer when I left and came to Ole Miss because I had a buyout, you know? And if I were to leave Ole Miss, someone would – Ole Miss would get – richer because there's a buyout there's no like we don't just up and just leave places so i think you know it, it's not it's not apples to apples it's apples to oranges it's different and 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 i just i just know that when you build a program you have to have continuity and consistency and and i don't think these kids are always leaving because they're looking for something better i just think that they're doing it because they can um, and that's that's the way it is right now in in sports. And I guess that's the power of freedom that they want. Uh, but we're, it's going to change basketball forever. And, and we're going to have to adjust and find out ways. We're going to have to be able to redefine what success looks like um, once that happens. Thank you. Can you... How, can you run us through kind of how this virtual recruiting is going? Like, how, how were the conversations with these girls like over the past few weeks? Oh, my God. I am Zoomed out, guys. Um, it, and, and I don't have the fancy background like Kermit. I guess my laptop does not um, – is not allowing me to do it. But the, but the whole virtual recruiting, I, I like it because you, you don't get to trick the kid with the nice facility or – the nice restaurant and you know, you don't have to use your players and say, you better be on your best behavior. You could kind of just focus on just your plan, what you have for the kid and, and, and what you, what you, what your plan is for them. And it, it allows you to really go in depth. And most times they're really locked in and focused because they know that they're not going to be able to come on campus. And so they, they, they're really paying attention. And so we do the same things that we did when they come on campus. So usually when they come on campus, we wine and dine them, soften them up, and then we'll have like a little business meeting with them to explain, you know, what, what our philosophy is, how, what we see, uh, the, how they fit, and what we uh, have planned for them to do. And then, you know, usually they either say they're coming or they're not, and they take some time. With Shakira, we were able to show her, uh, you know, where we were trying to go, how she would fit in, uh, what that means for her, and, and hit her with some numbers and some statistics, and it really worked uh, to the point where after that she committed on the spot. Um, it just didn't come out until a week later. But, but – right then and there if i don't know if you guys seen a commitment video at the end she was telling us she was coming uh virtually and so that was pretty cool and and that's what we got right now so that's that's what we're doing how much did shay's influence kind of play into that decision for her yeah i mean obviously it, it i don't know that she would have given me a chance we were 0 and 17. this kid is like a WNBA player all right, and and so those type kids, they they, one thing about this COVID, these kids are doing research. So like before you could say anything, and they'll believe you, because they don't have time to look it up, but now they have time to look it up. So we have been missing out on some big time portal kids just because they look at our record and they're like, eh, I'm not interested in Ole Miss. Uh, Shay allowed her to say, no, you really need to talk to Coach Yo. I really think this is what you're looking for. And so basically, if we were talking to basketball terms, because right now I'm starving for it, it was he threw it up and I, and I dunked it in, you know. Um, but, he, but he had it in transition. And, and then when he got to the rim, he threw it up. And I didn't lay it up. I slam dunked it because we really needed a kid like that, right? And so that, that was his influence. I don't think we have a conversation if, if it wasn't for him, if he didn't say, listen, I'm going there. 
I, you need to, you need to hear this lady out. And, and it was stiff. It was stiff. I mean, she had South Carolina, whew, uh, Louisville, Virginia. I mean, she could have gone anywhere in the, she wanted to, uh, but those were like her finalists. And, uh, I guess she, her and I vibed and it was great. And, uh, you know, she believes in what we're doing, like she said, and, um, we're excited. We're lucky. We're, I'm pumped. All right, we got a question from Bria. Okay. I want to ask you about the acquisition of Shay, like from Maryland. Like, how did that come about? And then, um, like, what else other than, like, you know, getting top recruits? What about his experience at Maryland? Do you yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, when I made the change on the staff, um, I, I felt like we needed to take it another level so that we could compete uh, with the other staffs, the top here in in the in the in our conference and I had known Shay for probably 10 years now and so we would always talk um obviously they were playing and they were getting ready to go to the NCAA tournament so I I didn't have a chance to talk to him but every head coach has a short list and so he happened to be on the short list and the reason why he he was perfect in my eyes it I mean Guys, we, we signed the number one recruit class in the SEC. We can recruit. Like, that's what I do. Um, but he has championship residue. You know, they won championships. He has had his hands with high-level players in the past five years, developing them and helping them go into the WNBA. He has incredible knowledge. So I was like, man, I need all of this. I need championship residue, someone that has won at the power five level. Uh, Cause really it was just me and Armenti as a player, but I was the only one that had been a part of a SC, uh, power five program that had success. So I needed, I needed that to come in. Uh, he's, he's phenomenal with player development. He's really good uh, with the players, just engaging with them. He has a, great basketball mind and he's a future head coach and so once their season ended because of COVID I got on the phone with them and the rest was history. And then uh, Tia Douglas? Taya. Taya. Mm -hmm. um, like what what about her are you excited about? Yeah Whew. I mean the kid made 13 threes in a game you know she shoots 42 percent from the field 40 percent from the three. Um, she can let it go. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm not talking about like she's left open. Like she's a, a sharpshooter, great kid. Her mom coached in the SEC. Um, and so she's from a basketball family. We, we were attracted to Taya because she was a qualifier coming out, but she had tore ACL. So her family decided for her to go to junior college for a year to play and, and get healthy. And so we have three years with her. Uh, just a high character kid, uh, really, really uh, hard worker, and and I mean can spread the floor. And we're gonna need that. And last question: What school did her mom coach at? She coached at Arkansas. Yep. Thank with you. Tom, with Tom Collin. Uh, thank you. Yep. All right. Up next, we got a question from Rashad. What's up, Coach? Uh, hey. Yeah, Clarion Ledger. Um, my question is, uh, what, what did Shakira tell you throughout her, like, kind of what she was, um, I guess, missing or anything yeah. from Maryland? Well, first of all, I got to just, I have a tremendous respect for Brenda Freeze. It was interesting because when I called Coach Freeze to, to ask permission to talk to Shay, before we got off the phone, she said, you know, I got a 6'5 kid in the portal, so you probably want to try to see if... <laughs> she would have any interest. I, and I remember saying to her, I said, coach, if I could get a 6'5 kid from your program, she can play the point for me. Uh, and, and, and we laughed about it. Uh, so I didn't really get into what she was missing. I kind of just got into what she wanted from me. And, and what that was, was a coach that was a system that was a situation that was going to allow her to expand her game. You know, at Maryland, they have a lot of McDonald's All-Americans. And so, you know, she kind of had to, like, stay in that role 
that she did well, but there are other parts to her game she really wants to do, like shoot the, the mid-range jumper, you know, catch it off the rim and be able to bring it up the floor. Well, this is like a perfect place to do it because it's not a lot I'm not going to let her do. You, you get what I'm saying? And so, and, and she has a chance to be a franchise kid here. And so she's going to be like the face of the program. Um, I think another thing that was appealing to her was SEC. Mm -hmm. Just being able to come and because if she does well here, I mean, the numbers show we have 172 players that are in the WNBA. I mean, the ACC has like 142. It's a big difference. And so she's going to really be able to, to show and see, you know, where she's up against the best. I mean, the, we have so many great players in the league. And so she was excited about that. And, I, and, and, and her and I really hit it off right away. You know, mm -hmm. once we got on the phone, it was almost like I had talked to her before. It was seamless. And uh, she enjoyed that. And she knows I believe in her. And she's, she's excited about that. What aspects of your game really attract uh, her to you? Um, I know she's like a face-up player. Can put yeah. the floor for it with her size and stuff. What do you really like about her? Uh, what I like about uh, Kira is she's going to allow our whole team. I was talking to Coach Shea, and he said, you know, Coach, this team, our team is bigger. This upcoming year will be bigger than Maryland, Maryland's team. So, like, we're, we're like, big and long. And, you know, like, I got two guards that are 6'1". You know, mm -hmm. Collins, Salentiana Collins, she's 6'1". Um, that's going to play the wing. And Donetta Johnson's 5'11", six foot, that's going to play the wing. You know, so we're going to be big and long. What I love about her is we can switch one through five. So we're going to be able to really defend at a high level. Uh, we're going to be able to be aggressive. Where her and Andasia Puckett, we can just send people to the rim and they, they'll be rim protectors uh, defensively. And she can guard a point guard. She's really agile. She can move. Um, as far as offensively, just really excited to see her expand her game. I know that in the year that we got AP, when she came, she was just around the basket. One thing that Andesia has added to her game, she can shoot the three ball and, and the mid range. So she's like a three level scorer now. We want to do the same thing with Taya. Just, uh, and I mean, and with Kira, we don't want to limit her, you know, like we want to be able to let her. Uh, once developed, shoot that three-point shot. Uh, she also can handle the ball. So that's something that she can do, kind of like Asia Wilson. You know, she knows how to put it on the floor and create. Uh, I, there's nothing I, I love everything about that game. <laughs> a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, uh, I, I tell you what, you won't see me standing up the whole game. Uh, I'm not going to overcoach this group, you know. We, we got some special talent. I'm going to let them play. Well, what, what part of that conversation you said that you guys felt like you already talked before and you connected immediately? What uh, part of the conversation was it? Yeah, just the initial one when I first talked to her, just kind of getting to know her. And, and, I, and I just said to her, I said, how did you end up in the portal? Like, <laughs> like why are you in the portal? Like, you're, you were doing well at Maryland. Like, you're pretty mm -hmm. good. I, I bet you would still be successful. And so she started to tell me what she wanted, what she was looking for. And um, I told her I felt like I could do it. Our first initial conversation was maybe five minutes, you know, um, because I kind of just want to give them something and then leave. I don't want to, you know, I want them to be intrigued. And then the, the next time we spoke, um, we started to talk about what that looks like for her um, and, and how, I, how we could help with that. And, uh, you know, basically, I, I told Kira, if, if you believe in yourself, then this is the place. Like, you can't look at the record. We were awful. I, I can tell you that. You don't even have to research that. You know, we, we were bad. But, but we're gonna, we, just, we did sign the number one recruiting class. So we're going to be good. Um, you know, and, and so you're not alone. And then we, I started to educate her about Donetta Johnson and Andasia Puckett and all the other kids. And so she was getting the information. Like we were, we was just texting it to her, like videos of the, of our facilities and, you know, my philosophy and little clips, like strategically just giving her information so that she could, 
make an informative decision and then just letting her know that I believe in her, which, which I do and, and telling her, telling her that, that every coach needs a kid like her to, to get to that point. You know, I said, Don Staley needed Asia Wilson and, 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 uh, you know, Vic Schaefer needed, shoot, he had a bunch of, he, he, but you need one, right? He, uh, you know, so I said, that's what you would be for me. And, and, and I felt that she had enough star power to once she would say she would come, others would want to follow. And so we already have like 2021s and 22s that are like blown away that she decided to make a decision for herself. And I, and I, and I talked to her about not doing what was popular, you know, uh, or, or what was like seamless. It would be seamless for her to go to another program like a Maryland. But why wouldn't you just come to Ole Miss and create a, a, something special, your legacy for yourself? And she, oh, she was eating that up. She was like, what? I, yes, that's what I want. I want, you know, and I'm like, come on, let's go. Like, <laughs> you can mentor Madison Scott. You can mentor these kids. And, and so the girls are ecstatic. Our whole team, like they're going crazy right now. Like they're so pumped up about having her. And, and so it's been great. Appreciate it, Coach. That's it for me. All right. Uh, next up, we have a question from Evie. Um, hey, Coach Yo. Um, first of all, I want to tell you while we've been on, I had a uh, text from David Johnson's wife, Ashley, yeah. and um, she says he is doing good, exclamation marks, take, uh, talking a little more, a little more strength, and he actually just moved out of ECU and onto yeah. the step-down floor. So, oh, hey, I mean, that's a miracle. Oh, my gosh, that's a miracle. Yeah, I mean, I, before, before the shutdown, I just did an interview with them. You, you know, so I was kind of like, I just couldn't believe when I, I got the news. It was just so hard to believe and, and yeah. watch it happen. Um, what I was going to ask you, you tweeted a couple of hours ago, um, if you're a head coach and can't connect with your players, your time will be short-lived. Yeah. Um, how do you – I mean, you obviously connect really well, and you're connecting really well with the incoming class you're signing. How, what is the key to you? Like, what do you do? What is in your mind when you think of connecting? How do you make that happen, and what does that look like? Uh, pretty much just being myself, you know, that's just my personality anyway. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a millennial, so in their generation <laughs> Z, so like I'm not too far away from them. I know how they think. I know how they um, process things. And, and these kids want to, they want to, they want to be encouraged. They want to, they want to feel empowered. You know, they, they, they want to be able to make mistakes and, Somewhere through this, um, as coaches, I think sometimes like we forget why we're doing this. You know, we forget why we're in the business. Um, yes, we need to win, but you can't win if if you can't win the kid's heart first. You know, if you can't win their trust first. And so, for the most part, when players come, they they get to be themselves. You know, I have one one of my players uh, tell me that you know, she she truly believes that there's she can accomplish anything here because I kind of empower them to do that. You know, I let them be themselves. And I think at the end of the day, that's what players want. And, and they want structure, you know, but they don't, they don't, they don't need a mom. They're moving out of their mom's house. So I try not to be mom. You know, I, I, I really focus on just being a mentor for them. And for some people that works and for some people it, it doesn't, it's not like I hadn't had transfers out, you know, uh, but, but, but for the most part, I know that that's what my players love about me is they're going to have a good time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And please, uh, well, I'll get, I'll get with them. Cause I, before he really got sick, uh, he texted me back. Cause I was telling him that, you know, I was praying for him and he texted me back, but you know, so just let him know I'm rooting for him. I will. Thank yeah. you. All right. We've Next question from Ellie. Hey, Coach. Hi. Hey, Meridian. How are you? Good. Good. My question for you is just, when you think of all the weapons that you have going into next season, mm -hmm. what is your, I guess, mindset with how you're going to 
be able to form them all into just one team? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, pretty much, I, th I think my experience with the national teams have helped me with this, you know, just with the Bahamian national teams, because you kind of get like two weeks, three weeks top with high level talent and you got to mesh it together and let them play. So our goal is going to be just to put them in a system that allows each one of them to be, to show their strengths. Um, it's going to be more about them understanding that, uh, that they all need each other, you know, them, them being selfless, uh, playing for each other. Uh, defensively, we're going to finally be able to like, press and because I have depth now so press and and really put pressure on people like a lot of people have no one in SEC has seen my style yet because I just hadn't had the type of players to do it you know uh, so they're going to see a variety of defenses from us from when pressing to you know aggressive man to a a long zone on the defensive end and then offensively we want to play fast you know, we're really going to want to get up and down the floor. Um, I'm not going to box my kids in, you know, like it's going to be pro style. You know, here's the motion. Here, here, here are the cuts and the reads. Do your thing because they're talented enough to do it. And I'm not going to overcoach them and um, put them in a box. And I think that's something that they're excited about. And then just one follow-up question is just thinking about how different next season is going to be from you know this past season just yeah. what are your thoughts on that and just I guess optimism with you know being able to have all these good players yeah um I just think it's all a part of the plan you know when I first met with a lot of you guys I said I said the first year is assessment you know I said the second year is is foundation and I said year three is proof of concept so, so this year, what we want to show is that everything that we've been doing before this has not been in vain. Like, it's a part of the plan. Uh, we're going to be young. We're still going to be young, but we're going to have, we're going to be, I hope our youth is our strength. I hope that they don't know that they're in the SEC with a bunch of, you know, high level teams. I hope they just feel like, hey, it's another game and they want to come out and play. Um, so we'll still have growing pains, but I doubt we go 0-16, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, I doubt we lose to a team we shouldn't lose to, you know, um, in the preseason. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But, um, but this is year three, proof of concept. This year three is when our fans, is when Nate decides if he's going to back me or not. This, this is the year, <laughs> you know? And so I don't think anybody's expecting us to win a national championship this year. They just want to see that everything I said is coming into fruition. I think we kind of started to show that when we signed the class. I, I feel like we'd, we would have lost all of our fan base had we not signed that class because, you know, they would have been impatient and, and that held them over. But now we got these other two kids I can't go outside without a neighbor stopping me. So, um, you know, everyone's excited and we're just going to keep trying to move forward in that way. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We have another question from Bria. Kind of the, the, the blueprint you were talking about, like year one, year two, yeah. is that what you came up with in your last stop? Or is that like some – like where you, where'd you come up with that? That was the first question. Uh, I came up with it when I, when I knew I had a chance to get this job you know, um, because it has to be a process. And I knew I was going to take over another rebuild, but at a much higher level. And uh, when just talking with some of my mentors and advisors, I'm like, man, what do I have to do? And, you know, I just started looking at it really like a house, like building a house. You, you know, you have to assess the land before you buy it. You know, you got to go through all that. And then, and then if you're building it, they got to put in the floor, right? And build a foundation. Um, and, and then you want to make sure it can withstand any type of storm. And, and I think um, I kind of looked at building this program the same way. And so with the proof of concept um, and year four is stability. So uh, that, that's how I did it in like a four-year span. I did it in a four-year span because, you know, in Mississippi, we get a four-year contract. 
So I was like, okay, if they're only going to give me four years, which obviously they're not, like I already got re-upped a few times. Like they, I was like, I got to do this in four. And if I'm going to do it in four, this is how I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to assess. I'm going to, I'm going to build a foundation, which I think we did. Um, and then year three, proof of concept, baby, so that it could be stabilized in year four and then really build it into the type of program that, that we think that it will be in the future. And did you like, you write it down or you like typed yeah. it up? Or yeah, it down? it's written down, yep. It's written down, Nate, Nate and Graham and Adam, they can tell you like they've heard this before. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I, I spelled it out for them. And, and I told them we were gonna be better next year. So, <laughs> um, and I stuck with it. So I really, this, this is a plan. Like that's why I know I'm the one for the job because this this is not an easy job, all right? If it, if it was an easy job, it would have been filled as soon as it got open, you know? Um, that's not what happened. This is this is a tough job, but I'm perfect for it because I'm, I'm naive enough to think I can win a national championship here. And you can't win big without players. And I can sell oceanfront property in the middle of the Sahara Desert. So I knew I would be able to recruit. And obviously, you guys can see that with what we've been able to do with our record. Like, we shouldn't be signing these, hot, these type of kids, but we are. So we're ready. We're, we're looking forward to being around here for a while. And then my last question, where did you, learn, where did you get your ability to sell ocean property <laughs> in the desert? Uh, I think that's just a gift, you know? <laughs> that's just a gift. That's, I, I just, I'm an overbeliever. You know, I, I really believe in myself. I believe that when I get to places, it's for a reason. Um, you know, if you ask me, I don't think anybody else could have done this job. I think it, I think it was designed for me. Like this was my job to have, you know, um, this job fits me so well because of the situation and my resilience and my confidence. And I think pretty much that's, that's just where I got it from. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question from Nate. Yeah, I guess just broadly, were you surprised when Vic took the Texas job? Do you know Nikki no. at all? Blown away. Really? Blown away when he took it. I, I, I was kind of sad because I was like, finally, we're going to be able to go at this, you know, <laughs> um, but, but blown away. But I understood. I understood. He's, he's a Texan, yeah. you know, and, I, and I, it was always said that he would want to get back at some point. And and funny when I when he left, I called Nikki. Really? And I said, "Why don't you just come to the SEC? Like, come on, let's have some fun. I've been hearing your name, you know." <laughs> uh, and she was like, "Oh no, they coach talk, you know." Uh, but I don't even think at the time they had contacted her, so I think she was being honest because, like, we're like I know her, like we talk, and, <laughs> and so I think she would have said, "Oh well, you know." They're looking at me, but I just know from being in the process here, it happens quickly, you know, because if you had talked to me on a Monday, I would have told you I never heard from Ole Miss, but by Wednesday I did. And, you know, and Friday I was hired. So I just think it, it was one of those situations that happened quickly. You know, I, I understand the rivalry. Um, Nikki is a competitor. I'm a competitor. So when we play, you know, we want to beat each other, but uh, it's definitely no bad, bad blood. Like, I've been knowing her forever. So I'm excited that she got the opportunity and got the job. All right, we have another question from Ellie. I was just going to ask, have you talked to Nikki now since yeah. she got the job? And what has that conversation been like? Well, I shot her a text, but I remember when I got the job, I had like a thousand text messages. And so I just, when I figured next month sometime when she gets through it, She'll know that at least I reached out, um, but she, but I'm a, I'm the SEC conference captain, and I needed to get her email to send her something. So I texted. I was like, Nick, I need your email. Like, I need you to respond to me. <laughs> and so she sent me her email address so that I can get her, um, you know, in the correspondence that I was sending to the other coaches in the conference. When did you guys first meet each other? Uh I met Nikki uh, when she, well, obviously I knew about her in the WNBA and whatnot, but I really spent time with her when she was at South Carolina and I was at Clemson. 
because we were both assistant coaches. And uh, I, I think everyone knows I have a relationship with Don. And, and so I would always go to their practices when I became the head coach at Jacksonville. And so I, it was a four hour drive. I would drive to Columbia and I would sit in their practices every year. And um, I would, I met her and then I, I would see her on the road. And um, I guess our relationship just blossomed before she got ODU. Uh, I was in the mix for the ODU job. Uh, but then I, I was pregnant and I was like, you know what, this is not a good idea. And the, and the funny story, I called Nikki then and I said, go get this ODU job. Like I just pulled my name out, go get it. And, uh, and if you follow me on social media, like I was so pumped for her at ODU doing well. So like we've been knowing each other for a while. All right. I think that's all we got for today. Uh, thanks for everybody for awesome. coming to participate. We really appreciate it and hope everyone stays safe. Thank yeah, you. Thank 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 you.